Okay. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Yorick. I'm one of the developers of the FreeCAD project. Uh, this talk here is mostly about one specific project that I've been doing in Brazil with FreeCAD this, this last year. Uh, lots of people I talked with uh, asked for more, um, they would like to hear more about, generically about FreeCAD. So since we have quite a lot of time, uh, we have like uh, up to, to seven, so we have 40 minutes. So I propose to go quite fast with this, like, like taking my 20 minutes like everybody else. And then we have more time to talk about FreeCAD more generically. You ask me a question and I, we talk about more about FreeCAD. Is that okay for you? Right. So this Wikilab is the project I will be talking about now. It's basically, um, yeah, uh, these slides are, I would put that. This is the project we've been doing. It's basically a community built house. Um, it's not a house, it's actually used as a um, free software laboratory by the university where it's, be it's been built. But uh, it's the construction system is also made to make anything else, houses of anything. We just we happen to need a laboratory, so that's what we build. Uh, and it's built, this wooden system is the Wikihouse system, which is an open source um, building system made of wood that is cut by CNC machines, which are uh, robots that can cut piece out of material. And uh, uh, it's built by volunteers. It's extremely easy to build. You see that all these pieces have numbers on them, and then you have a manual. And the only tool that you need, uh, shit, you don't see it, but it's a, it's, it's a hammer. It's a um, rubber hammer. And so it's basically the only tool you need to build it. There is no screw, no glue, no um, anything else. It's just all together because the system is really well thought. That's all the, the joints are made to become rigid. Um, so this is our built building after all the work. It's been built over during about three months. Um, this is the inside. It's not 100% finished. You see that there are still a lot of problems. But it's basically there, and it's, it's done. Um, this is how it started being, uh, being built. Uh, you begin to build those structures that you see here on the ground. Then you put them up. And then you put the parts that uh, bend them together. I will explain all that a little bit now, uh, later on. Uh, so we begin to build like that. This is the base uh, wall that we, we didn't build that ourselves. We just hired the contractor, a constructor to build these parts that are more traditional construction. And that was also one of the, uh, one part of the, of the experiment is to have a mixed system with a part that's built by professional builders and one part that's built with uh, volunteers and see how that could work together, how the experience of one could help the other and that was another part of the experience. And that's the actual building with everybody like hammering crazily. Um, and that's really the, the, the big part of it. If you look at the, the result, the result is not so impressive. It's just a little house. But the, the process of it, everybody there who build this thing, like uh, went out of there saying, this is the best experience of my life. I actually built a house. And um, the whole point of the thing is actually to be able to build your own thing. Not so much that the result is so impressive or so special, but is the fact that you are able to do it with no knowledge uh, at all. Uh, everybody was there, like uh, came there without any experience. And after one hour, you are professional. You understood the whole system, and you can uh, teach the others how it works, because you know it's by heart. And so um, this is after the, uh, this is the first person who lived in the, in the house. Um, this is after, after you finish the structure. You put the panels on, on top of it, and it's rigid. 
normally it doesn't need any more um, fixation or anything. We decide to put some screws here to make it stronger and because we're trying to make it last. Uh, because most uh, WikiHouse based, I will explain a bit more about the WikiHouse uh, afterwards, but most existing WikiHouse projects uh, have been built inside an exhibition, for example, or though there were temporary things that were dismounted after one week or two weeks. And now there are like, I think, three or four that are built to last in the whole world. Uh, so this is still experimental. We don't know how long it will hold, but we try to do our best to make it last many years. Uh, so we did a bit more than just... Um, so that was a big problem. The construction was slow. We had to protect it from the, from the rain. And we didn't think well about that. That was one of the biggest problems we met. Then since we are in Brazil, um, we have a very soft climate. Basically, you never have to protect against cold or against uh, heat because we're in the southern part of Brazil where it's never too hot, too hot and never too cold. So basically you can forget about insulation. And um, I will show uh, afterwards uh, what they used to do in Europe because the WikiHouse project is based uh, it's from Europe. Uh, so they have to be really careful about insulation and not letting any cold or any humidity enter because humidity is terrible for, for the, the wood. It cannot take water, otherwise it begins to, 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 to rot and to, to, to change shape, and uh, that's terrible. But in Brazil we don't have so much of a problem, uh, because the, the, the air is helping us instead of being an enemy. So what we decide to do, instead of cladding it inside a, a skin, is to let it breathe. So we use this uh, material. And we left a space between it and, and the wood. So the air could flow all the time and enter uh, below and escape uh, on the top. So the, the air would flow all the time and keep the, the, um, the wood dry all the time. And this is working quite well, actually. So it's all open on the sides. The air can f flow between all the parts of the, of the structure because we don't have to care much about being tight because it's not important there if you have a bit of air that goes in, nobody cares, it's even better. Um, so we have a completely different situation than, than in Europe and we were able to experiment with these quite interesting um, air circulation systems. And um, this is the inside, you see the details of how the, 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 the joints are made and they are really tight. That's the advantage of having this wood piece cut by a machine, is that the precision is absolute. Uh, so you can actually dimension these things to be just tight enough that you need a, a hammer to, to put them in. And once they're in, they're like very strong. And uh, um, so we did a bit of testing to adjust the, the calibration of the machine, but it was like the first test was okay. Um, because like the precision is built in and um, so this is what the machine does. It basically uh, comes from your model. That's where FreeCAD will enter and that's what we'll, I will explain now. Basically your FreeCAD file goes to the machine, more or less. Uh, I mean the, the process is quite straightforward. And um, this is the pieces being, it's a quite a lot of wood. Uh, this wall house is like, 170 pieces of wood. It's like two piles that size. And uh, when it begins to accumulate like that, you really have a problem where to put them before you, you use them. And um, a little bit to show you the details. This is another wiki house they've been building. They're finishing right now in Almer in, near Amsterdam. And uh, there was a bit of competition who would finish his first, and we won. And, um, but it's ours is much easier, so that's what, why we won. We, we don't have half the complexity they had to, to cope with here. But if you see, it's exactly the same system, and exactly the same shape, and exactly the same problem. <laughs> so this is the WikiHouse project that we took our shape and our system from. 
Uh, this is a system that was begun in 2011 in, by two architects in the United Kingdom. Um, they built, I think, above 30 or 40 in the whole world, but those that are still there that are were used to, to stay, uh, it's about, th there must be about four or five now in the, in the world world, I, I think, two or three in the UK. Now we have one in Brazil and there is this one in Almere. It's fully open source. You can just take their files um, and adapt like, it, like if it was code. Uh, just it's 3D models and then the whole system of how you build it. Uh, they have manuals as well. They have a lot of resources uh, outside just the, the, the files, uh, which are files as well, but you, you understood me. Um, and it's now well tested. I mean, uh, you see that the first ones were there were lots of defects in how the joints would work and the whole thing would go like that. And, and uh, over the years, you have a lot of people who worked on, on this, uh, even pretty famous engineers. And uh, the system is now extremely solid. Um, th these uh, uh, columns, as we, we call them, the, the, the main structures, is really impressive once, once you, you begin to build them. And the more you have like three, four, five pieces crossing each other. And after the five pieces are, are there, it's extremely solid. Everybody will look, look at that and you, you can really hang a lot of weight uh, on them. And it's a heavy construction, so it has a lot of stability. And it's really something that you feel that it has matured and it's become something really you can trust. This is the wiki house, the whole story of the wiki house project. Like you see the shapes being uh, changing over years. Uh, the, the, all the research that went into finding the, the right shapes. But what's the reason why not using screws or some other pieces? Basically, I would say, I, would say uh, I would repeat the question is why would they, would, why are not uh, they using screws, for example. Uh, I would say there is a kind of point they want to prove that it's possible without any, uh, any other materials. And also the, the extreme simplicity um, that you need your hands, basically, to, to build it. I find it quite impressive. And you would have screws, you would begin to need more, lot more equipment. And, and there is something incredible in the fact that you just need your hands and, and, and a hammer. And I, kind of like that and so we try to yeah you need the machine okay 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 but let's say you have a part that's um, production of the piece and then you have a part that's building and the building part is, is or you would separate one from the other and then the building part is like pure without any um, but that's true that's the kind of stuff you find on the, on the WikiHouse website. You grab their files. It's basically all the old ones are based on uh, SketchUp. Those are SketchUp files. But they're not now mig migrating to um, some scripting system for Reno. So you could enter the parameters and it would build the 3D model automatically for you. Of course, we try to port that to FreeCAD. That's what's coming now. Um, that's the kind of material you find there. That's what we used basically without modif modifying anything because we wanted like, to not try anything fancy and take their base system and try to do it well. And uh, next time we'll try to experiment some stuff, but we really tried to do it the best way we could, so we tried not to modify anything from it. And it's basically modular. You make it as long as you want. It's just repetition of modules. Um, in the, in the WikiHouse files, you also find them already separated uh, to be processed to become files, CNC files, uh, G-code files to be used by the CNC machine. Uh, so this is all already set up, but we redid that, that part as well. And then you have like mounting manuals. You see that they say you could use you could use some crews and um, so this is FreeCAD. This is the project I'm participating to since the project started in 2002. I've been there since 2008 I think. Um, 
Yeah, FreeCAD, for who doesn't know it, it's basically a 3D modeler, uh, an open source 3D modeler. It's LGPL license. Uh, and it's basically the, its main focus is that it's a technical modeling application. Basically, we used to say it's used to build, to model things that you will build in the real world afterwards. Uh, so it's from electronic components to CDs, basically. Anything you would need to build afterwards, and you would need a precise modeling and controlled modeling that you could um, do and redo afterwards. It's generic because it's, um, that's what I was saying, it's multi-purpose. Uh, it's used for any, any kind of stuff. Um, it's not really specially for that kind of, for, for buildings or for this or for that. Um, a bit like uh, who knew AutoCAD, uh, that was the strength of it. AutoCAD was something everybody used. Engineers, uh, hobbyists, architects, everybody would use the same software. And it's something that has been um, lost in the commercial world because uh, they want to specialize, because they want to sell spe specific solutions for each uh, profession. And we like to like go back to the old good times with FreeCAD and try to have a kind of application that's just a big generic thing that you just wait for your creativity to, 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 to work on it. Um, and it's parametric, that's a big feature of FreeCAD, that all objects are defined by the parameters. It means like instead of modeling cubes, you would define an object that, for example, that's a brick wall, and then you would say it has a width, a length, and a height. And then your object is defined by these three parameters. And then you can change them afterwards. Um, you change the length, the, the object changes its, its length. Uh, and everything is driven by these parameters. And that's the website of FreeCAD. That's FreeCAD, basically. It's pretty, for who does know it, it's pretty common application. Like you have a very standard Qt-based interface and a 3D view and modeling tools. It's really, the, the interface has nothing special. Um, that's the kind of stuff that people do with FreeCAD. Um, where is Juan? Here. <laughs> he did it. This one. That's one of the last ones that appeared on the, on the, on the forum. Yeah, people do quite, kind of crazy stuff with, with it, and more and more. And houses as well. So um, one of the first things we did with this project is convert the uh, SketchUp stuff to, to FreeCAD. Um, one of the main differences is uh, SketchUp is based on mesh geometry, which are basically points and triangles. Everything is made of points and triangles. And in FreeCAD, we use BRAP geometry, which is basically surface. BRAP means boundary representation. It means that the objects are defined by their uh, boundary um, surfaces. And these surfaces are basically nerves surface. Like every edge of the surface is a curve of mathematical curve. So you can basically do anything that could be a curve, a mathematical curve. That means you have extreme control of, over uh, exactly where your, your uh, surfaces pass through. Um, it's a bit the same analogy as uh, bitmap and, and uh, vector graphics. Um, like in vector graphics, uh, you have the <coughs> mathematical definitions on where the points are. If you zoom, zoom closer, you still, still see a perfect line. Uh, and in bitmap graphics, there are pixels. And if you zoom very close, uh, you see the pixels. And uh, it's the same thing. Mesh geometry is like uh, faceted. You already have the location of the points. And with bare geometry, we can recalculate the triangulation any time. So you don't have any resolution uh, in it. So um, <coughs> we took the, the files from SketchUp, converted them to uh, we imported them in FreeCAD, then convert in BRAP geometry. Uh, and then the thing is, of course, it's like dumb geometry, where each point of the object is already fixed somewhere, has a coordinate. And we need to do, to turn, we wanted to turn that into parametric object, that you could like stretch the, the whole thing, or uh, put more modules, or what if I put a, a window in it, or remove a window, and I have all that uh, interesting uh, parametric behavior. 
And actually, this is something um, you don't need to do at once. You don't need to have the difference between a parametric world and a world that has no parameters at all. You can start with shapes with little parameters and then add progressively more parameters. And next time you take the file and you want to modify one of the objects, you add some parameters to be able to modify them further. And then you can really do that step by step. That's what we, we did. And then uh, we had all the integration with all the stuff that's not the wiki house. And then, then the fun began, is that you begin to be able to produce a lot of interesting stuff from your files. Um, so that's basically what, what happens. You take these SketchUp models, which are like dumb objects, and then you extract the, the contour of these shapes, and these become, be, become parameter, parametric in FreeCAD. Uh, you can put dimension in this and say, this must have like 20 millimeters, and then you have a parameter, and then afterwards you can change that to 30 if you want, and you don't need to redraw the shape. It would just uh, go for it. All this is really a step-by-step -step work that you don't need to do at once, and then you can refine, refine, refine over time. This is the finished model in, in FreeCAD with all the rest. It's not only the, the, the wiki house. And you see one of the good thing is that you can organize that really well the, the way you want and group the objects by type and by and do yeah of course it's in Portuguese but uh, just to get you the idea that you can really go into pretty uh, complex models and keep something that's really easy for a human to understand how it's organized um, and that's one of the big points I think this is when you remove the the stuff on top of it. It's really the, the, the wooden construction, the inside, and all the piping is there. Everything is in the model, basically. It's pretty complete. And so we had, we had this model, that's the, the wall building. And we had another model that's just one element. And that's the one we use to produce the um, files for the CNC machine. Because it's basically seven of these modules. So we did just one and used the same output seven, seven times, basically. And so it's pretty well organized already from the Wikihouse project. You have these uh, side uh, panels, you have the inner structure, then you have the reinforcement, and then you have the side plates. Everything is already like defined and, and separated uh, in the Wikihouse project. You just have to like understand how it works, and uh, it's really amazingly, amazingly well, well done. And this is what we end up producing uh, with it, uh, all these things that I will show now that you, you need to have. And of course, the, the most beautiful thing of using a free software to, to do that kind of experimental stuff is that you end up coding, because you, you end up adapting it for, for, for the special case. And so we had quite a lot of new FreeCAD codes uh, being done thanks to this, this project as well. Um, that's the kind of 2D plans that you need to uh, get the authorization to build the thing. You have to, uh, in our case, we were on the university grounds. We had to ask for authorization to all the university instance and, and, and stuff. That was the worst part of the whole thing, is to be able to obtain all those authorization. So you need these drawings to be able to show them. Renderings, to, this is one of the, uh, this project was financed by a crowdfunding campaign. And uh, this is one of the images we had to produce to show that how it would be uh, when it would be finished to make people want to contribute to the, the project. Uh, there will be afterwards like a call for artists to propose uh, drawings to, to be uh, painted on top of it. That's not done yet. Um, No, that you, you export, that's one of the things I would, yeah, I didn't actually explain. This uh, was like basically produced by FreeCAD with a little bit of rework in Inkscape afterwards, because some things are still easier to do in Inkscape to put this text that are not in FreeCAD. <laughs> this one basically is the FreeCAD model that you saw, so it's just an earlier version. It was exported in Blender and a couple of textures, lights put in Blender, and rendered in Blender. Um, 
we try that's a uh, distance between the two that we're trying to, to reduce and uh, the idea I was talking the other day with uh, the, the uh, Tom Rosendahl from Blender is to be able to have like a one button you would push in in FreeCAD and it would like land in Blender with a preset of lights already on and you would like have almost a one button render uh, and he's really interested in de de developing in this further so we should be able for the next um, time to reduce that distance that you need to produce a nice render. And you have other solutions as well that are bec bec becoming uh, real-time rendering, et cetera, that becoming interesting to use together with, with FreeCAD. That you could have all the modeling in FreeCAD and just export some other application to do the final image. Uh, these spreadsheets, that's one of the biggest advantage of having a sound model of your, your building is that all the quantities are there, how much wood will I need, uh, exactly how, how many square meters of wood would I need, how many bricks uh, I would need are, are there. And then uh, once you have that, putting prices on this um, is pretty easy. In Brazil we, have, we are lucky enough to have um, several public f sources of prices for the construction that are maintained by federal government. Over, like they take all the, the public works they do, and they they extract from that the, the price, the median price of one square meter of brick wall, one square meter of floor, uh, and so and so you can it's public. You can use that for your own project, and it's basically the same price that you will find uh, the, the day you will build it. So you, if you have the right quantities, you have a really precise estimation of the price, the final price of the building. That's what we use to, to estimate how much money we would need for the crowdfunding. And it turned up to be exactly what we, we, we spent. Which is, Which is uh, around 15,000 euro. 60,000 Brazilian real. It's about four now. It's, yeah, 15,000 euro. including everything. There is like a, a fee of the crowdfunding platform that's about 7%, if I remember correctly. Then there is the price of the wood. There is the price of the uh, cutting of the wood because it's a, it's a firm, a company that did the, the cut. And the price of the, 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 the guy who did all the, the brickworks and, and so. So the cut was made in Brazil? Yes. Everything was made locally at like 100 meters from, from the, the construction yard. Did you say 15 or 15? 15. Like one five. One five, yeah. Okay. And uh, this, is, this price is about the same price that you would uh, spend for a brick house of the same size in Brazil. But um, it could be reduced a lot. A uh, big part of this price went to the, the company who did the, the cut. Um, and if you imagine that you would build several of those houses and that uh, you could have a machine uh, that you could operate with the same uh, volunteers that build, you could reduce that price crazily. So this, is, this could be even reduced a lot if you begin to think on a bigger scale or on a more community-based uh, planning. Um, but... Maybe, but, but all. You use screws and the regular yes, screws. you could. <laughs> uh, every, every builder, the, the, the builder who, who did, who was were looking at that and like saying, "You guys are using crazy lot of wood. This could be done with like half the wood." And uh, yes, but then you'd need more uh, experienced people to do it, and um, it changed the. And I think that there is kind of um, uh, pedagogic thing that you can build your own house. And you don't need to be especially, uh, you need motivated people to, 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 uh, to, to do all the manual work. You can do it really in a simple way. And this, is, this project has this crazy uh, capacity to show people that it's really simple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you have people living in that, it 
don't like that this has occurred. I didn't expect it, but mm -hmm. such things should be calculated. Yes, only that uh, this is a really hard system to calculate because you wouldn't have any software that is able to calculate this kind of so many uh, joints and have a precise uh, result. And um, the, the effort in all those things is really complex. And uh, I believe this system where you cannot have at, at this moment uh, official calculation of it. You have several important, well-known engineers that work on this system, including Arup, which is maybe the most famous uh, engineer's office in the world world. They are based in the UK and they're built in the world world. And uh, they worked on this. And uh, so you have lots of famous people, lots of engineers work on this system. And uh, it all goes pretty much together with experimentation. And uh, each generation of this, how that goes further, you begin to know that they see it and the, you begin to know it's, a, I would say it's a common knowledge that goes building together with, with the building. But that believe it's really hard to calculate beforehand. The, the wood is, of course, with the milling machine done. Yes. But it's a choice to do? Yes. No, it's a CNC machine with a, with a cutting head that's basically like um, a drill machine. Uh, it's a little head that goes, you put the, the plate, the, the, the wooden plate on the machine, and this machine goes cutting this thing. There is also a laser cutter that has less yeah. waste. That is true. But we had a hard time finding, we didn't find a big enough uh, of these machines around the, the construction yard. And um, there must be like a couple of them in Sao Paulo, which is where we were building. And uh, um, th this one was really convenient, and it was close. It was people from inside the, the, the open source community. It was much better to, to, to go with them because of all, all the circumstance. And so we like stopped looking after other possible solutions. Probably the laser cuts, you would have like two firms in Sao Paulo would do it. They would charge a lot more. And um, this might have made things go, go wrong. Uh, this is basically the, the kind of uh, file that you get from your panels. When you have, once you have all your 3D models, uh, these red lines are the, it's the G code. It's basically the, the path that the machine must, the head of the machine must uh, walk on the piece to, to to carve it like that. It must go up, go down, uh, and and do the shapes. Um, this is basically G code. It's the language that most of the cutting machines in the world, even the three D printers, use. And they have each uh, machine vendor has a di different dialect. So you have like to do adaptations in depending on the machine. But it's basically the same. The same system. Um, in our case, uh, we weren't able last year, in the half of last year, to do it all in FreeCAD. So basically what we did is export these 2D ships of every piece of the model. And then the, the shop where we did the cut, they did the G-code from, from, these, from these files. Uh, because it was like eight months ago, and lots have been done since then in FreeCAD that wasn't there at that time, and we had to produce it, and it wasn't there, so we did it that way. But now, so that's the kind of files that were produced from, from these files. Um, now, we would be able to do it in FreeCAD if we had to do it today. Everything is there to make this uh, G-code and export it uh, directly to a file that is ready to send to the, to the machine, basically. Is that computed, or is this manual work? It's computed. You still have to, for example, you take this face, um, and you have, uh, let me show you, the path module. Um, it's in, in the next slide. But we have now a lot of tools to take one piece, take the driver face of it, and then it would calculate all the paths. Uh, automatically. Um, so that's all the work that has been basically done last year 
it's, there has been a lot of work on that CNC part. And now it's totally possible to take all your panels and from each one generate automatically a part. And you have a lot of options if the holes have to go before the external profile, if you have to change the order uh, and that kind of stuff. It's really becoming, becoming cool. That's another tool that we have been working on uh, because of this project is a way to gather a lot of pieces and join them uh, in a special, in defined area, which would be your base uh, wooden material, and to try to lose as little material as possible. Is that done by or by hand? This is done automatically. This is. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, this interface is basically what you use, that's the new tool, nesting tool. You define the container, you add the shapes in it, and, and it's still pretty slow because it's new and not uh, very much uh, optimized, so it runs like half an hour for s something like that, but that will get better over time. Uh, we need to optimize it. But it basically works. That's the, the new path workbench. Uh, you see that it has quite a lot of tools already. Um, basically now it works pretty much uh, like you define a project, a cutting project, that's the interface here. You define your base mat the size of your base material, where is the start point of your, uh, the head of your machine, and then it goes fill this up. This is a typical path job, and so you have a lot of setup to do, but then you just add <coughs> stuff, add operations one after the other, and the machine will do one after the other. At the moment, it works only for cutting because uh, most of the people that worked on this uh, are doing it for, for cutting. But it's exactly the same language um, that goes for a 3D printer. Only the thinking is different because you're not cutting, you are adding materials. So probably we will need to think a bit about it. Uh, maybe some operation need to be thought the other way. But the, the whole process and the file that goes out, uh, out of this should be the same. Uh, I mean, all the big part, the hard part is, is done. It would be probably a matter of testing and trying to find what, what needs to be inverted. It's being worked on. There is already a lot of lot done. Like um, one month ago, there were there were like a big change that in in the order of the in, you know you do, do first the contour, then you do each uh, each hole, and some guy codes something to calculate the distance between the hole and to reduce that crazily because it was like done by, by its position, and now it's done by the distance between the holes, and so you have a lot of possible optimization to do. And it's, it's a long-term work, actually. To, to, but it's, it's totally being, being done right now, actually. This is the kind of settings that you put on each, uh, each operation that's in, in your job. Uh, this is the property of each tool. You, can, you have some machines that have several tools, so you can change, and then so you define them here. So the, the um, the, uh, if the program knows the di diameter, it will know where the, the path must, must go. Uh, like if you have a one centimeter tool, you need to pass your line at half a centimeter from the border. So the border of the tool will be exactly on the line that you want. Also, also for the, um, because one other problem, maybe not with this kind of tool, but rather, is that when you use it, they get, uh, they, they Shape. So exactly. The other Not yet, okay. but it's. On here, which line it is, it's getting really interesting to work with. And then at the end, you select one of those post processor which will convert the, the generic G code that we use in FreeCAD to a specific machine. At the moment, there are like five or six that work well, and the Linux CNC is one of the most well-known uh, 
controller for this machine. So that's the one that's mostly used. That's the kind of machine that w does the work. And basically, this is what we learned fr from the, the, the whole experience of this project, that um, it's really easy to fabricate the architects. But I'm an architect by trade. I'm not a programmer. I went into this like by my own. But uh, architects are not used to touch the, the fabrication. They just buy stuff that's existing. And it's totally a new, new area that we can enter by using this kind of hybrid space between fabrication and architecture. And there is a whole world that's not really much explored. And that it's much easier than what us architects would think, most of us would think. Um, and co cost control becomes ex very precise because you, you have a lot of um, lot of data to, to work with. Um, and yeah, I won't read all that stuff, but uh, there is a lot of experimentation and learning to, to, to come uh, from, from this. And that's it. How are we? <laughs>